Hello Internet, welcome to Making Money. My name's Eric and this is your Daily Dollar, our financial segment where I give you one lesson every day to help you reach your financial goals. So we're talking about investing. We've been talking about investing for a little while now. The other day we did a video of 12 different types of investments that you can get into right now as an investor and start making some money. Now we're breaking each one of those 12 down a little bit more, giving a little bit more detail and giving you a little bit more on how you can actually make money using those investments. We've been talking about bonds and annuities so far. Today we're talking about real estate which is kind of a cool topic. It's also a very big topic. So much like my video the other day, I've got notes because I don't want to forget anything. <laughs> um, we did mention in the other video the other day that real estate can tend to be a bit more of a risky investment than some of the ones that we've talked about so far. Um, this can be in the form of buying properties um, and then you know renting them out and making rental income or buying a property letting it increase in value over time and then selling it we also mentioned that because that is a little bit more of a hands-on process you also have to take on additional costs like taxes property taxes um, and in the event of actually renting out a place, then you also have to manage that rental property, which adds another layer on there as well. Today, we're going to talk about seven ways that you can make money on real estate, seven ways that you can invest in real estate. And the first one we're going to talk about is, yes, that first one that we talked about the other day, rental properties. So you can be a landlord, a lord of the land. And as a landlord, you get all of the responsibilities of being a landlord. Um, what comes with a landlord, you might ask? Well, paying the mortgage, property taxes, insurance, maintaining the property, finding tenants, and dealing with any problems to start with. So there's a bit involved in being a tenant. I mean, I'm sorry, in being a landlord. There's a bit involved in being a tenant too, but that's not the point of this. <laughs> um, even when you are financially stable and able to hire a property manager, you're still taking a lot of hands-on responsibility in that property. Of course, there are more ways to do this a little bit hands-off, but in general, this tends to be on a very hands-on process. Um, the other thing is that by choosing your properties and your tenants carefully, you can actually reduce some of that risk. So we can reduce it by, you know, having someone else manage the property. We can also reduce it by being a little bit more critical as to what we buy and who we rent out to. Um, the best part about this whole process is that not only can you make income off your rentals, you can still make money off the appreciation of the property over years later when you finally sell it as long as the property has gone up in value. Um, speaking of appreciation, that's number two. <laughs> so appreciation um, is, in, when we talk about real estate, real estate has long been considered a pretty safe investment, a maybe not safe is the right word, a pretty sound investment, um, mostly because real estate prices tend to increase. In fact, before 2007, um, historic housing data basically showed that houses would increase in value almost indefinitely, it seemed like. Um, actually, between 1963 and 2007, houses increased in value every single year. Obviously, though, in 2008, when we had the housing crisis, things didn't go that way. And the lesson learned there is that while, yes, it's a general principle that house prices will increase, it cannot be guaranteed, just like any investment, and that is where the level of risk comes in. You can buy a property, expecting it to go up over time, and by the time you're ready to sell, that property has gone down in value. So definitely something to consider. All right. Number three, I tend to think of this as the other most common type of real estate investment when people think about getting into real estate. This one comes up a ton, and this is flipping houses. This is also the other very hands-on way of dealing with real estate. Um, so flippers 
buy properties, hold them normally no more than three or four months. It's a very quick process normally, um, and then sell it for profit. And when we talk about flipping a house, we tend to be talking about one or two different ways that flippers make money. The first one is the repair and update method, which just like it sounds, you're buying a property that needs some work. You plan on repairing things, you plan on updating things, and adding value to the property through those enhancements and then selling it for a higher price again short period of time later. These should be value added upgrades and they should be able to be done quickly because again we're not wanting to hold on to this property very long. The other way is a quick old hold and resell. This one doesn't involve you fixing anything. <laughs> the, the point of the whole in resell is that you buy a property at one point, it's, it's a little bit like appreciation, but in a much shorter period of time. So you buy it at one point and then you aiming to sell it very shortly afterwards. Normally this is done when the market is rising rapidly. So you buy it when it is starting to rise and with the intent of a few months later, you know, selling it at a much higher price and making a profit. Very quick process, not a lot of extra that needs to be done there. Um, however, when we talk about flipping homes, we really have to understand that you are taking on that risk that if you can't you know, if it doesn't go the way you're expecting it to, if you start renovating a property and find out that there's a whole bunch more that needs to be done, now you've got a money sink, you've lost money on this investment. If you think the market's gonna go up over the next three months and it doesn't, and it goes down, you lost money on this investment. So this again adds a degree of risk into the investment, but the potential rewards are fairly nice. So a lot of people do get into flipping houses. So those first three, like I said, were more hands-on. And when we think of real estate, that tends to be what a lot of people think of when we talk about real estate investing. The next three are slightly more passive. Um, and you'll get what I mean here in a second as we talk about our first one, which is number four, REITs. R-E-I-T, that's Real Estate Investment Trusts. So the corporation or trust in this case will use investors' money to purchase, operate, and then sell, uh, sorry, um, income producing properties. So malls, um, healthcare facilities, uh, office buildings, anything that will produce income on its own. So you are funding this in a way. Um, REITs are bought and sold on major exchanges, which means that you can buy REITs where you buy stocks and you buy ETFs, anything like that, you can, you can buy REITs. Um, now, in order for a REIT to function, it must pay out 90% of its taxable profits as dividends to shareholders. So this is really where you as the investor will make a decent amount of the you know the gains in your investment through dividends um, what this does for the REIT though is it allows it to operate without corporate income taxes because <laughs> it is using your money to buy and sell you know properties <laughs> buy sell and operate properties um, it is able to do so by paying 90 percent of uh, of its I'm sorry, taxable profits as dividends, so it doesn't have to pay corporate taxes, which is kind of a cool way of working around that process. Um, this is great for just the same reasons anybody would buy dividend stocks. It allows regular income for the investor, um, and you also have the opportunity to make money off the appreciation of that asset. If the REIT goes up on the stock market, then yeah, you'll make money on that increased price. So REITs. And hopefully now you kind of get an idea what I mean. REITs are definitely more hands off. Um, we talked about, you know, the first three kind of being a lot more involved. So the next three here will kind of be a little bit more like REITs in that regard. The next is, and these names, they get me, man. <laughs> REIGs, R-E-I-G, Real Estate Investment Groups. Um, if you want to own a rental property, but don't want the responsibilities of being a landlord, a REIG might be right for you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, basically what happens is a company will buy a building or set of buildings, awfully apartment buildings, um, because the intent is to split them up. Um, and the investor will buy one or multiple um, and join into this group. Uh, the company manages all the units, so again, kind of passive, hands off, um, but uh, it tends to be a potentially safe way to get into investing because while they manage the properties, you're able to kind of sit back and get a percentage of the, um, the rents that are made on that location. That being said, some groups tend to charge high prices and the quality of this investment depends 100% of the quality of the company that has bought the properties. <laughs> so something to consider if you're thinking about getting into REGs. Um, we had mentioned mutual funds before, how they are managed, and it really depends on how good that manager is, on how good the, you know, the fund does. This is very similar. Um, and spoiler alert, we'll talk about mutual funds in a minute. <laughs> um, so that's REGs, something to consider. The next one is, is RELPS, R-E-L-P, apostrophe S. <laughs> These names are, I, I don't know, Real Estate Limited Partnership. That's what it is. <laughs> um, similar to a real estate investment group, but it's formed to buy and hold properties for a set number of years. Um, property managers and real I'm sorry, real estate development firms serve as general partners in this partnership. You're entering into a partnership, basically a business. Um, and outside investors, such as potentially yourselves, provide funding um, and enter in as limited partners. Um, because you have limited ownership, um, you also will receive periodic income payments and I'm sorry, not potentially, and you will receive a portion of the final sale of the property. Um, so these tend to be a good alternative as well. Again, a little bit more hands off. You tend to fund the project, but you're also able to make money, a little income along the way, and you're making money on the final sale percentage wise. The last one, like I had mentioned a minute ago, is a real estate mutual fund. So Real estate mutual funds tend to be mutual funds that invest in REITs or other real estate companies. Um, this is great for investors because it gives a investor the opportunity to um, be more diversified in real estate. You know, instead of going out there and buying a hundred, you know, REITs, you can buy a single mutual fund which invests into 100 REITs <laughs> or 100 real estate companies, whatever the situation may be. And it gives you a much broader asset selection because of that. So it's built in diversification. Again, much like we talked about before, mutual funds really are dependent on who they're managed by um, and there can be fees associated with mutual funds. Um, but the other thing that mutual funds are good at, and specifically um, what I like about real estate uh, mutual funds, is that you can get analytics, you can get data about the real estate investments from your mutual fund. Meaning that they can give you data on any acquired assets in the mutual fund, any specific real estate investments in the mutual fund, and data on the asset class overall. So while yes, you know, you don't want to be too heavy into one side, you could have multiple types of real estate investments. Mutual funds could be one. You could use mutual funds to get some data and then use that information to help you invest in other ways in real estate. Um, again, you know, diversification helps you spread out your risk a little bit. You know, if you're too heavy into say real estate, then you're going to be subject to, you know, the, the, the housing market more than anything else. Um, that being said, you know, balancing these assets can help you in ways like this. Now we talked about those seven types. There are definitely more ways that you can get into real estate investing. Those tend to be the seven most popular um, and definitely uh, ways that you can get into investing right now. Again, I'm no financial advisor, so it's up to you to determine what investments are right for you. And obviously the risks associated with all of these investments go much deeper than what we could cover in a, what, 14, 15 minute video here. <laughs> um, 
you know, there's a ton to consider, especially if you're talking about buying properties and working with tenants um, and getting into any sort of business arrangement. So be aware of that, but hopefully this gives you a better idea of what the options are out there available to you. And as always, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you are, feel free to subscribe keeps you up to date with the newest videos, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm interested, are you guys into real estate investing right now? What kind of real estate investing do you do? Let me know in the comments below. As always, you can hit me up on Twitter, link in the description, and I will see you guys tomorrow for another lesson. All right guys, see ya.